to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I'm your host here on this channel every week where I upload new content on this channel to discuss various Norse heathenry related subjects, things that may strike my fancy at the time, things that I want to talk about, kind of get off my chest and share with the community, um, or just some things like what we're doing today, which is a continuation of a series type format. This is episode three of Bragi's Corner, and Bragi's Corner is a little series that I have here on the channel that's just kind of a storytelling sort of thing. Um, I pick a poem from here lately, it's been from the Poetic Edda, and um, I kind of deliver my own spin on it. You go down to the playlist section of the channel, check out the other uh, previous videos I did. Um, I believe it was uh, Thrymskvida, um, and uh, I can't remember what the other one was, but go ahead and check those videos out. If you like what you see, please give the videos a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of it, become a subscriber and make sure that bell notifications are turned on. That way you're notified every, every time I upload new content. So let me give you a bit of a background. Um, today's story is going to be a poem called Himnesvida. And this is Hymir's Lay, or the Lay of Hymir. Um, it's a story about when Thor and Tyr uh, go to Jotunheim to retrieve a great cauldron uh, for the uh, god of the sea, or the god uh, who is associated with the seas and the oceans, Aegir, is having a great feast. And uh, the story is that Thor and Tyr go to Jotunheim to retrieve a cauldron. They get into some interesting things along the way. We hear about Thor's great fishing trip. And so, here we go. This is my version, my rendition of one of my favorite stories from the Poetic Edda. So, Aegir was a friend of the gods. Still is. Um, he hosts wonderful banquets in his hall under the oceans, and the gods of Asgard um, have been known to frequent Aegir's hall for a very, very long time. He, he puts on wonderful spread, the greatest mead in all the realms, the greatest food, greatest everything. It's just a wonderful time, and the gods love to party, so he, they make a pretty frequent, you know, uh, they, they return to Aegir's hall pretty frequently. And in this particular instance... More of the gods showed up than Aegir was expecting. Uh, he starts seeing all these people coming in, and he says, Wow, this is going to be a party of all parties, and I don't have enough mead here to satisfy all of my guests. Um, kind of needing something a bit bigger, and I don't have it. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do, guys. I'm sorry, but you know, the mead may be a little bit short um, tonight. We may not have enough to satisfy everybody. Well, that doesn't sit too well with most of the gods, and, you know, everybody's like, well, come on, Aegir, you know, like, we, we, we've been coming here now for how long? The last, you know, a couple thousand years, whatever it's been, I'm losing track of time, but, you know, come on, what do you mean? You know, it's, it's a party, it's Aegir's Hall, what do you mean we don't have enough mead for everybody? And so, uh, Tyr recommends that, uh, he says, well, actually, I know somewhere that we can get a pretty big cauldron that will make a wonderful batch of mead and satisfy everybody here. Uh, the, the, the cauldron itself is like a mile deep or something, and uh, it's actually my father, uh, Hymir, he has this cauldron in his hall in, in, in Jotunheim. So maybe we can go get that. And you know, Aegir starts to look around and say, well, that's great that you know of it, but it's in Jotunheim, and Jotunheim is way, way, way out there, and we're here now, so I don't think anybody sitting here is, is willing to to take that journey just to go get a cauldron, so, I don't know, well, Thor steps up, and Thor's always eager to, to head out to Jotunheim, he's gone there many, many times, and he says, you know what, me and Tyr will go, Tyr, you're gonna go with me, we're gonna go saddle up the chariot, and, you know, get out there to Jotunheim, and we'll go ahead, and we'll bring the cauldron back, it'll be all right, I got this. So there they go, they ride out to Jotunheim for many, many days, it takes them quite a time, at least in the mortal sense of time, because the gods... Their, their perception of time is quite different from ours. So what seemed like days and days that they were riding for, they finally reach Jotunheim, and they come to the great door that is the door to the entrance of Hymir's Hall. And uh, upon entering, they are greeted. They hear this great loud roar, right? And they hear this horrible screech. And Thor looks around and says, I don't think that's Hymir. And Tyr looks at him and says, no, it's not. It's my, my grandmother, and she's not the greatest, you don't, you know, this is why I'm no longer out here, that's why I came to live with you guys in Asgard, she, she, you know, doesn't treat me too well, and as Thor looks up and sees Tyr's grandmother, this, this hideous Jotun woman, 
right? Just 900 heads, just this, ugh, this terrible looking creature. Well, before Tyr's grandmother can say or do anything, uh, Tyr's mother steps out and gets Tyr's grandmother out of the way. So get back to your bed, you know, go finish watching your sitcoms, whatever. Just leave this to me, I got this. And, and Tyr's mother is, is absolutely ecstatic to see Tyr and Thor even, and she starts to cry, and she says, It's been so long, Tyr, what are you here for? It's, it's wonderful to see you, you know, it's, what, are you, what are you doing? What's, what's going on? What can we do for you? And uh, Tyr says, well, we're having a big party back in uh, Aegir's Hall, and we need, uh, we need Dad's cauldron. You know, the real big one, the one that's like a mile deep. Um, we need to go ahead and, and get that going. Um, so Tyr's mother says, well, your father is not in the greatest of moods nowadays. Um, we may not want I don't think I would be comfortable loaning it to you, because if, if you take it now... Um, and he's out hunting or whatever, he's, you know, if he comes back and he sees that his favorite cauldron's missing, um, he's going to know that something was up, and I'm going to have to tell him who I gave it to, and then you guys are going to have a problem on your hands with, uh, with more Jotuns coming to, to Osgard, and I know you don't want that, I don't want that, so um, your father will be home in a little bit, you guys need to just chill and hide, because he's in such a foul mood that if he sees you, things aren't going to go so well. So they start figuring out, where are we going to hide? And, uh, you know, Tears Mother says, once you hide in the cauldron, hide in the very cauldron that you're wanting to borrow. The door and tears say, well, okay, fine, whatever. And as they climb in to the cauldron, they start hearing this great rumbling. The earth around them is, is, is shaking, right? The beams of the hall are vibrating. The cauldrons are all clanking about up in the ceilings. And in bursts Hymir. And he's not in the greatest mood. Hunting didn't go so well today. You know, it was it was it was too warm. You know, his his hunting, the, the prey that he was hunting, they weren't very active, and he didn't come back with much of anything. He wasn't in the greatest of moods. So he says to his wife, "Wife, it was a very good day out there in the field. I need some food. I need some drink." And she says, "Yes, absolutely, Hamir. We'll we'll get you taken care of. But um, we actually have some guests. Some some friends have come to visit, and I uh, thought you might would like to know." You know, that uh, we have some guests entertained, and Hemir is not hearing it. He's like, look, I just had the worst day out in the field. Now you're telling me we have guests, and you want to call them friends? I think not. Matter of fact, I think the friends that you say have come here are those Asgardians. I think they're some of the ones from Asgard, and I'm almost sure of it. So you tell me now where they are hidden, or there will be trouble. So she says, well, uh, she points up to the ceiling, and he looks up. It's in the cauldron, in the, in the cauldrons. So he starts banging things and things start crashing. And next thing you know, the greatest cauldron of them all falls down. Lastly, and out falls Tyr and Thor. And Hymir sits down in his seat and he looks at him. He's not even really worried about Tyr so much as he is about Thor because he knows Thor's reputation. Thor has a reputation of visiting Jotunheim and not being so kind to Hymir's people. So he says, what are you two doing here? You must be up to no good. And Tyr says, hey, Dad, <laughs> been a while, long time, no see. Sorry to come here under these circumstances, but we actually need to, to borrow your cauldron. Um, we got a big party going back out in uh, Aegir's Hall, and uh, we, need, we need it to, to make some mead. Well, this doesn't please Hymir too well, but as is customary, he is not going to turn away the guests. He says, you know what, I don't even want to talk about this right now, but I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, we're going to go ahead and we're going to eat, and maybe we'll talk about this over, over dinner. So they prepare a big feast. There's oxen and, and, and wonderful spreads of, of boar and all kinds of delicious stuff. And Thor, being Thor, just right off the rip, just grabs two oxen and just consumes them immediately. And, and Hymir is a little bit agitated, but nonetheless impressed and said, Boyfriend, you know, I've, I've never seen quite the quite appetite on, uh, on anybody. You, you just cleaned out all the meat that I have here. Um, if you guys are going to be sticking around for any length of time, I hate to tell you, but... There's no more food left. You just ate it all in your first sitting. So um, if you're going to be around for any length of time, you're going to need to prepare to go fishing tomorrow or something and get your own food. And Thor says, well, <laughs> fishing, that's my kind of thing. I love fishing. I'll be up bright and early waiting for you. So the next morning, bright and early, Hymir is getting the boat ready. Thor gets up and he looks around to see what he needs to get as far as bait. And he sees some more of Ymir's oxen out there. So he goes out into the field and he grabs a couple oxen and he throws them up under his shoulder or up under his arms. And uh, Ymir thinks, well, while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a head start. I don't really 
like this guy. So he starts rowing out into the sea, and uh, Thor says, Oh, no, you don't. You wanted me to go fishing with you, and fishing with you, I will go. So he takes one big leap and lands into the boat, and he says, Now, tell me, Hymir, where do we go to fish? Where are the best and biggest of fish out here? What are we catching today? And so Hymir says, Well, we catch nothing smaller than whales, you know? And Thor looks at him and says, Whales? Those little itty bitty things? No, I want something bigger. Give me those oars. So he starts to row, and he starts to row, and he rows so hard and he rows so fast that the boat that they're on looks as if it's skipping over the water. It's not even touching the water half the time. It's just like a flat stone over the, over the surface of the water. And finally, they get out so far and so deep into the sea that Hymir gets nervous, and he says, Thor, we've gone too far. We are in the realm of the Midgard Serpent, where Jormungandr dwells deep down below. We cannot fish here. And that gets Thor excited. He says, oh, that rascal. This is where he hangs out. Okay, all right. No, this is exactly where I'm fishing. I am going to fish that serpent out from the depths, and I'm going to finish him off once and for all because me and him don't get along very well. So the oxen that uh, Thor had taken out of uh, Hymir's, uh, you know, flock or the, 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 the pastures where the cattle were dwelling back home, uh, he takes one of the oxen's heads and casts it lying out into there and it lets it sink down into the deep. And on the other side of the boat is Hymir, and he's out there, you know, fooling around with some of his lines. And Hymir gets a little tug on his line, and he pulls in two whales. And Thor, you know, yeah, good job, you got a couple whales, that'll be, that'll be a nice snack, a nice appetizer. And at that moment, Thor's line starts to shake and rattle and jerk. And Hymir says, I think you've got something. And Thor says, yeah, I certainly do. And he starts reeling in that line, and as... The line gets closer, and as he starts bringing everything up to the surface, the look on Hymir's face is one of pure terror. He realizes that, Thor, you have got Jormungandr. You have got the Midgard Serpent on your line. And this pleases Thor. So he rips the line, pulls Jormungandr by the head, and throws him up into the boat. And the look on the serpent's face is one of just, he knows, he knows Thor, and Thor knows him. There's fire in both of their eyes. The poison is dripping from the serpent's teeth. The breath coming out of his mouth is as hot as the fires of Muspelheim, and Hymir is over here basically just crapping his pants, if you want to be honest, right? And he's not having a very good time at all. There's this giant serpent in here, and now Thor, he reaches down and he pulls out Mjolnir the hammer, and he's about to lay a devastating blow on the serpent's head. And Hymir has had enough, and he cuts the line, thereby releasing the serpent back into the depths. And Thor just looks at him. Ymir kind of shrugs and says, we got, we got whales, you know, we got whales. Thor says, never mind, never mind. You just ruined my fishing trip. Let's go back home. So they go back to Ymir's hall. And uh, Ymir, you know, he saw the, the bravery and the strength and the courageousness of Thor out in the ocean. And he was said, you know, I'm not feeling a little uh, emasculated by you here, Thor. You kind of stood me up out there. Uh, let's see exactly how strong you are. I have this little cup. I have a cup, kind of like this. He says, I want you to try and break this cup. Of course, well, that seems easy enough. He picks the cup up, he smashes it on the ground as hard as he possibly can. And not only does the cup not break, it breaks the stones of the hall, cracks them right down through. So Thor says, hmm, okay. And this has got the giants, like the Jotun over there, they're all thinking, this is great. You know, Thor the mighty, Thor the brave, Thor the strong, Thor the strong, everything. Can't even break a small cup. So Thor is now getting a bit agitated, and he gathers up more of his strength, and he hurls it across the room and tries to hit an iron beam. And all it does is just bounce off the beam like it were a, a, a ball or, or a rubber ball or something. It doesn't even dent the cup or do any kind of damage. And at this point, Thor is frustrated. The giants are laughing at him, making a mockery of him. And at this point, he hears a small whisper and a, and a gentle woman's touch on his arm. It's Tyr's mother. He's, and she says, throw it against Hymir's head because Hymir's head is the hardest substance in all the realms. Nobody else heard, but Thor did. So T Hymir says, all right, Thor, I'm going to give you one last shot at this. If you can't break this cup, you're not the strongest at all I've ever seen. So Thor, all right. And he rears back and he hurls it at Hymir's head. And it makes contact. Not a dent, not a scratch in Hymir's head, but there are pieces of the cup now all over the floor. And Hymir says, all right, all right, very well done. You know, you got me there. You know, I didn't think you'd get it, but you got it. 
So then at this point, he says, oh, I've got one more feat of strength for you. I want you to see if you can carry the cauldron that you hid in when you first got here. See if you can carry this thing out of here. And if you can, then I will know for sure that you are the strongest of all. So Thor's getting ready to do it, and Tears, Tears wants to impress his dad. You know, he hasn't been around for so long. He wants to kind of be, you know, Dad, look at me. Look what I can do. So he tries, and he tries, and he gives all his might, and he can't make the, the cauldron, you know, budge at all. It's not moving. Thor says, Tear, I know you're trying to impress your dad, but this is not the time. We got a party to get back to. We've already wasted enough time here. Give me this thing. So Thor kneels, down, Thor kneels down, and he puts his shoulder up under it, and he heaves, and he strains, and he picks that cauldron up right over his shoulder, and out they walk. Out they walk get back on the chariot and start heading their way, uh, making their way back to, to Aegir's Hall. Well, as they're traveling, Tyr looks behind him and he sees a great host of Jotun uh, forces in pursuit of Thor and, and Tyr. And he says, Thor, um, don't mean to you know, rain on the parade here, but uh, we've got some company and it's Kymir and everybody from his hall. My mother's there. My grandmother's there. We all know how ornery she can be. Uh, we need to handle with this. We, we, we need to handle this. We, we can't just keep riding. We're going to bring all these Jotun to, to Aegir's Hall. We can't be having that. So Thor stops the chariot, puts down the cauldron, turns around, picks Mjolnir up, slings it across the way, and in just seconds, it annihilates every single Jotun out there, including Hymir, Tyr's grandmother, the only one who was spared in the onslaught from Mjolnir's fury is Tyr's mother herself. And it is said now that she gets to live in relative peace and comfort in Humir's Hall without the, you know, problems from the grandmother, or the problems from Humir, who was just a very, you know, bitter and, and very angry giant. So, they get back to Aegir's Hall moments later. Everyone's still sticking around waiting. They've been already kind of having a little bit of me, trying not to drink it all up. And Thor and Tyr come in, the cauldron over his shoulder. Thor sets it down, and everybody is super pleased. Seif, Thor's wife, as a matter of fact, she is, she is very, very proud. And she said, I was sure that Thor would be able to bring this back. I had no doubt in my mind at all. Very proud of her husband, you see. And then Odin, who is silent for the most part, says, yes, indeed. Because what Thor sets out to do, Thor does. So there is my delivery and my version of the poem Hymnskvita. If you haven't read it yourself in the Poetic Edda, I definitely uh, urge you to do so. There's probably versions of it online, PDFs, that you can uh, download or read yourself. Um, but if you haven't gotten a copy or you don't have a copy of the Poetic Edda, it's certainly part of one of the essential points of reading for any heathen. Um, and read the poem yourself. Um, read different versions of it. Get, get it, you know, in different perspectives from different authors. And uh, anyways, guys, that's my delivery. That's my uh, version of it. So, uh, before we end this video, everybody that's watching live on Facebook, please don't go anywhere so I can read your comments and see what everyone has to say. Um, everyone that's watching live or on the uh, YouTube channel, you know that I usually go live here on the channel on Monday nights at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, I'm moving the live stream just this one time to Tuesday. So, I will not be going live on the channel tomorrow, Monday night. I will be going live on the channel Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. So, I hope that you will come um, have a discussion with me. It's just kind of an open, casual discussion on the channel. We'd love to have you around. So thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't yet already, please make sure that you check out all of the related content that you see pop up in the end screen. Make sure you become a subscriber to the channel and turn on bell notifications so you're always notified whenever I upload new content here. Thank you all again so much for watching and for supporting Midgard Musings. Hail, and I will see you all in the next video.